Welcome back. You're watching RT now. More than 1,800 aftershocks have been felt in central Italy since Wednesday's 6.2 magnitude earthquake. At least 290 people were killed, and the number of dead is expected to rise. One of the worst affected places was the historical town of Amatrice. Amatrice is one of uh, several small towns and villages that were reduced to rubble. Russia's emergency ministry says it will be assisting the Italian authorities with the ongoing rescue operations in these areas. The German army says it fears more than 60 Islamists may have infiltrated its ranks. It's now calling for mandatory security checks for every military applicant. German media quotes the army officials expressing concern that terrorists could carry out attacks using skills from that military training. And the editor of the Pan African News, Wabiyumi Azikiwa, believes right wing nationalist extremists could also be using the army as a training ground before launching attacks. Uh, if you have uh, right wing extremists, in all likelihood, they have been radicalized uh, outside the military forces. They themselves as well could be going into the uh, military services to get the necessary training. Uh, we've seen uh, right-wing extremist attacks uh, in Europe along with uh, those that have been uh, credited to uh, so-called Islamist extremists. There's anger and it's going to be very difficult even for a country like Germany which is considered the largest economy on the uh, European continent to integrate uh, these migrants uh, in a situation where there's already high unemployment and a uh, upsurge in uh, poverty. In Brazil, the fate of the suspended president Dilma Rousseff will soon be decided by the Senate, which is voting on her impeachment. It's brought pro protesters out on the streets calling for her return to power. RT Spanish correspondent Nicolas Sanchez O'Donovan is in Sao Paulo. As Dilma Rousseff's supporters protest nationwide, her political trial continues in the Senate. And it's not looking good for Rousseff. Just a few days ago, 55 of the 81 senators voted in favor of completing the impeachment process. That gives us an idea of where the Senate is right now and on how much work Dilma Rousseff's defense team needs to do in order to turn that situation around. Tensions are rising inside the Senate. Just Friday we saw how the session was suspended for several hours after senators kept yelling and shouting at each other. Meanwhile, here on the streets, uh, a large number of Brazilians continue uh, their protests against uh, the whole impeachment protest and against Michel Temer, the interim president. They fear that he's going to implement budget cuts and he's going to put an end to social programs. Let's take a listen. Temer is going to put an end to all social progress. I'm pessimistic about this process. As some senators have already said, they're not going to change their opinion. This isn't a real trial. As we say in Brazil, all the cards are marked. It's already been politically decided to remove from power a president elected by the majority of the people. Also, a group of international intellectuals, authors and artists have signed a document condemning the whole impeachment process against Dilma Rousseff. If she's found guilty of breaking fiscal law, she will be permanently removed of power and Michel Temer will effectively be the president of Brazil through 2018. It seems that the Congress is very much controlled so that whatever the people say on the streets will not be listened to. They will just let the people uh, get off some steam, but that's about it. Uh, probably Mrs. Rousseff will not be able to come back as president, and that is a tragedy for Brazil because it means that these so-called neoliberal policies will be imposed on Brazil from now on, and even probably somebody will get re-elected in 2018 that will continue them. 
unless, of course, the people on the street really make a, a lot of pressure, and that will have to be listened to at some point by the local media and local government. And in her testimony to the Senate, Dilma Rousseff has said her conscience was clean and that she had not committed any crime. During her 45-minute address to senators, Rousseff once again stressed that her government, unlike the present interim government, had been legitimately elected by more than 54 million Brazilian voters. And coming up on our Tito National, it's going on the ground with Afshin Rotansi. And if you're watching us in the UK or Ireland, Sophie Shorinadze sits down with an investigative journalist who's uncovered secret deals by the Vatican.